Hello and welcome to episode 145, yes, 145 of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Holland. And I'm Jeff Mayo. And Jeff, I don't care how the hell you're doing because we don't have time. There's no time for it, Jeff. There's no flipping time. It is Last of Us Part 2 week. Me and you have both, we have the game. I was about to say in our hands, but we did not get physical copies because, you know, COVID. Uh, but we have the game. We have both been playing it. We're both somewhere around half-ish. <laughs> I don't know. Through. We're not looking oh, at walkthroughs. We don't know where we are in the story. Hell no. This is a minefield out there. You can't, like, I was afraid just to get a thumbnail for this uh, video. I was like terrified looking for photos. Because I'm like, someone's going to put knack killing like dropping the nuke on the world and i'm gonna know that that happened damn it uh well darry i just want to say for the thumbnail um sp- I guess spoilers for what we're talking about i kind of wanted you to have a picture of ellie's body with Minmin's head <laughs> with a pic with a camera taking a picture of a pokemon and shantae's hair <laughs> yes <laughs> That's what yeah, I want. Yeah, I'll get right on that after after this podcast. Um, so get ready for just a generic picture of uh, Ellie. Uh, yes. So we will be talking about The Last of Us Part 2 at the end of this podcast. If you do want to just skip the straight of that, you can. There are timestamps, but you should stick around because we have lots of other cool things to talk about that we will get to before then. Um, it's going to be spoiler-free, that discussion. We might have a spoiler section at the very, very end of it. But we will, that's why it's at the end. <laughs> yeah, but we will be very clear about moving to it. You know, It's going to be spoiler-free up until then. So, before we get to that, though, there is another game that me and you both beat since the last podcast, and that is Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Uh, Me and you both beat it, like, within, like, 30 minutes of each other. Yep. (laughs) It was, uh, yeah, pretty great. So, Jeff, we've, we've talked about this game when we were both, like, you know, somewhere halfway around or whatever. We were both super enjoying it. Did that carry through all the way to the end for you? Oh, yeah. It's just a jolly time. It's yeah. It's a jolly time. I agree. I, I definitely agree. What what about it? What about it got the jolly vibes in you, Jeff? Um, just the characters and the general design of everything. Um, the... Oops. Um, sorry, Dar, I forgot my numpad wasn't working. Okay, whatever. Um, Metroidvania well, stuff is fun and exploring... Um, I like the well. I don't want to say it's addition because I've um to the Shantae series is an addition to the Shantae series for us, considering we only played Half Genie Hero. Right. But for other people, it is going back to its roots somewhat. Um, the Metroidvania, yeah, Metroidvania, yeah. yeah. So that's a that was fun and different for us. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like I was slightly worried because one of the things I loved so much about Half Genie Hero was that it felt. Like I've said a bunch of times on these podcasts, it felt like it's a Metroidvania type game or 2D platformer, but it's like a little bit more like lax or a little bit, you know, easier, a little bit more accessible to where like I can kind of just play this game like late at night while I'm listening to a podcast or doing something. It's like engaging enough to where it's not boring, but it's also not like so grueling and everything. I was a little worried that, like, obviously, since this one's a lot more of a straight, normal Metroidvania, whereas Half Genie Hero is, like, more level-based and everything, I was a little bit worried that, like, that aspect of it would fade away or something, Mm. but it definitely didn't. I think it was, it still had that vibe where, you know, I I was never stuck for too long. It was just enough to where I'm like, "Uh, where where should I go, whatever. But um, whenever you would get like a new ability, it, usually I got that ability and it's like, okay, I know I've been seeing these things all over the map. I know exactly where I need to yeah. go to use this. And um, every time you got a new ability, I thought it was very satisfying. And the game is very structured in a good way. Like, you know that mm-hmm. like, I'm going to get here and like, I'm going to get to the next siren, and beat her and be like, okay, that's a good closing point well, for the day. You know? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Just don't, even adding on to that for the siren cycle, it's go into the dungeon. Oh, you free another half genie. So you get a new transformation. Oh, you beat the siren in the dungeon. Now you got to go out and find the fusion coin to f- to do the full fusion thing with that half genie you just saved to get another ability. <laughs> and then, oh, now you got to find the new dungeon and rinse and repeat. It's yeah. a very enjoyable and rewarding cycle for this it's game. It's predictable in a good way. Like you yeah. kind of want the familiarity with this type yeah. of game, you know. You don't go to Shantae necessarily for crazy <laughs> groundbreaking. It's not stuff. like an innovative game and like that sounds like an insult but it's really not because i love this game for that i love this being like yeah it's just it's a game i can just pick up and go play and just like i've said a bunch of times and it stayed true to the end there's just some magic 
secret sauce about this game that it just is so fun to play like i just mm. i'm in such a good mood when i'm playing that game you know I, I guess it's just the bright colors i love the art style and just the characters are so like i love the writing when you first start playing shantae it might seem like okay this is like cheesy bad writing for this like indie game written by a, a few small people a small team or whatever they they're not like accomplished writers or anything but like once you get into it you're like oh no this actually has a lot of charm and a lot mm-hmm. of wit and like self-referential humor and everything like obviously it's not taking itself seriously in the slightest bit but like it knows what it is and it'll like break the fourth wall and do things there was many times i'm like oh that's really cute you know that was really good yeah yeah um the one thing that i pretty um to to do talk about the negative a little bit and i think it sounds like you agree with me the boss fights were overall pretty bad in this game yeah they they ranged from outright bad to like not offensive but like okay. bland like okay or whatever I, I wouldn't say any of the boss fights got over too good it was either okay or just this is obnoxious mm-hmm. yeah i'm trying to think um yeah <laughs> the the one with the robot and you're digging and stuff just still stand up it's like i i felt like there's something we both missed to it yeah, and the but the problem yeah, the problem with the like this game's design is you can completely you can beat a boss without ever actually understanding what you were supposed to do mm. because you just get so many healing items and stuff that you can just like brute force smash your head through the wall and like you're you'll make it. And there was like yeah, boss fights like that where it's like there's no way this is what you were supposed to be doing, but yeah somehow i survived <laughs> in anyway. that final boss i'm gonna assume you did the same thing it's where you just terrible yeah. where, where you just spam the same transformation over Pretty, and over yes because yes. <laughs> i mean it's there were too many bosses like that it, like there was either the boss like the digging one that you're talking about where it's like i don't know what what the hell i'm supposed to do and you never learn what you're supposed to do it's either that or you go into the boss fight and you instantly know what you're supposed to do and it's the most tedious boring shit in the world you're the like brains really yeah god the brains are the, that's that and the final boss like i think both of those were pretty terrible and it was one of those you get in there and it's like okay i know what i'm supposed to do it's not fun it's just you know yeah. tedious so that like pretty unequivocally the whole game was not super fun but it did not it wasn't enough to completely detract from the rest of the game which Mm -hmm. you know unlocking that map was super duper satisfying you know just seeing that like slowly oh i unlocked a new area oh the new transformation let's go explore baby yeah like i super recommend these games to you i mean at least the two that we've played i'm sure i'm sure the ones before that are also really good but i know these are kind of a different vibe and everything definitely different art style like these are the you know these these two games have the same art style exactly yeah and the ones before it are pixel art stuff yeah yeah it's just very like just cute warm jolly games it's and for you xbox live people i believe pirate's curse is free on there right now or very just nice. make it all free. I can't remember which. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I recommend Half Genie Hero and this one. But you can definitely just skip to this one, obviously. But I recommend going back for that one, too. I don't think it's one of those that, like, going back to Half Genie Hero would be so hard. It's like, no, a lot of things carry over. A lot yeah. of things are the same. And that's, you know, it's just... I And I, I'm definitely in I'm in on the series now. Like, I imagine they're, they're one of those that, like... I can't can't imagine these t- like they reuse a lot of assets and do stuff. These games probably aren't that hard to make. It's a smaller mm-hmm. team, so I imagine that they probably put them out at a pretty decent clip, right? I mean, Half Genie Hero was probably only like two years ago or something like that. I can check real quick. Something, yeah. So I mean, now from from now on, I am in. I'm in on the Shantae. It's just so uh, something that gets me kind of excited for the next game is where we end off. I guess Shantae spoilers. Um, 2016. Okay. It was technically three years because this game kind of came out last year on mobile. That, yeah, that's that, true. That weird thing. Hopefully they'll do that again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't. Um, is we end it with Shantae getting that book that had information about her mother, who mm. I know for the series they kind of, kind of, they kind of mention. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I guess next game they might actually have that's her in it, which would be neat. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I mean, in the story stuff, everything that goes on in this game, it's like, yeah, it's like not 
super serious, but it also doesn't take it super serious. So like you're interested. I'm invested yeah. in it, but not in a like like it's it's funny because I like I love both games, but literally like Shantae and like The Last of Us are literally like the polar opposite games. <laughs> like there's couldn't be any different. <laughs> it's really funny. One is jolly, the other one <laughs> is miserable in my opinion, a good way. Yep. But I highly recommend everyone should check it out. It's just such a fun game. Such a fun game. Yep. Well, speaking of games. Jolly. <laughs> yeah, jolly. Oh, he, he did. No, no. I, I, I ended with fun game, and then he just said, speaking of games, <laughs> this, is this a hint to where he feels about it? Nah, I'm joking. Um, I got the Pokemon Shield DLC Isle of Armors. And is it Isle of Armors with an S? It's Isle of Armor. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to add the S. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. I respect your S. Yeah. Um, so I got, yeah, DLC came out. I don't think I'm, yeah, I'm not through all of it. All of them because Last of Us came out and I had to get through that. It, it, it is my job, my duty. Um, <laughs> but I did start it, and first thing I did when I walked out of there, well, after I did the story stuff and battled the new asshole rival, which I appreciate them bringing back. You got a rival in there that's different between depending on the version. Um, the sword is a poison user. I forget her name. Um, and then in the shield which i have um you get the psychic user avery and mm. I, I just like it that they bring back the asshole arrival it's been gone <laughs> since like gen 2 yeah yeah it's something people like, kind of been wanting back and it's kind of like yeah like, why is my rival so friendly be mean you <laughs> yeah i mean it's like i'm okay with the person being the fr- like you know the your companion the person you fight for being your friend but that's just like i think they said instantly like for kids nowadays they don't want to have the asshole arrive i'm like that's lame it's lame. You it, talk it, these it, kids mix up. it up. Do both. Have a friendly and have an asshole. Have two rivals. I don't care. I, I guess they kind of tried to do that with Bidet, but oh, yeah. he wasn't a real rival. I mean, yeah. Nah. Yeah. So first thing I did after I beat Avery is just go around the island and catching Pokemon. And how so, was that? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I went into this. I tried to go in this <laughs> as blind as possible. I knew some of the Pokemon that were in there just from the trailers, but I didn't know um, uh, most of them. Um, I think they ended up adding close to 200 maybe from this from this DLC. I oh, might wow. be wrong. Um, I, yeah, of mostly like old Pokemon. Yeah, yeah they're all old Pokemon. They're, they're, I guess that is a kind of complaint. Very little new. The only new ones were the Galarian Slow, the um, Slow Poke line. Well, only mm. slow, slow uh, poke and slow bro. Yeah. Slow King's not going to be until the next DLC. Ah. Um, but I love Galarian Slow Bro. You remember what he looks like, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the only new Pokemon. And Cub Fu. Whew. And its <laughs> evolutions. Those are the only new Pokemon. There looks like they're going to be more. And um, well, we already know they're going to be more in the um, Crown Tundra, the next DLC. But mm-hmm. we don't. I got a feeling we're not going to get any more new announced besides the ones they've already announced. Because by the looks of it, as far as I like, they showed a lot of that new Pokemon stuff in the very first trailer for both the DLC in January. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, only two new Pokemon sounds like a bummer. but Yeah, or two new lines. Yeah. So, like, four new Pokemon all together. But, yeah. Still not much. Still not much. Yeah, not much. Um, but Slubber's dope. I love its typing. Psychic mm-hmm. Poison. Nice. Um, I think I mentioned this before when we talked about this. As far as I know, that's a completely unique typing, which is always fun. Yeah. Um, and it's a boss. And I also like it because, like I said, the guy I have is my rival was psychic in the one, it, and she, uh, sword is poison. So no matter which one you're in, their their ace for the rival is the the slow bro, mm. which is cool. Nice, nice, nice. Um, but yeah, going back to what I. Me just going around the island. It was a lot of fun. This is the whole island is like the wild area, right? I, also, I just realized I like having a discussion now because you've actually seen the whole game. So I the have. stuff I had makes comparisons <laughs> makes sense. You, you, you sound slightly less like a madman, just really. <laughs> oh, wait till Kingdom me. Hearts when I ran oh, for like God. five seconds. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to make up a little bit for that, Darby. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, but it was just a lot of fun. The wild, the wild area in this, or the island in this, is a lot more branched out. It's still pretty simple in comparison. Like, I played this game. Like, I did up to my D- what I did in the DLC, and then immediately went and played Xenoblade Definitive Edition, uh, a 2010 yeah. game. And there's such a big difference in the environment. Oh. It's like, obviously, Xenoblade is a lot 
has a lot more stuff going on. Like, I don't know. In my, well, in my eyes, Xenoblade's like world design better than a lot of things. Most games. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that shouldn't be a hot take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like... yeah. Um, but it it is a step up, and it's unfortunately what I got to expect from and hope for from Pokemon. Yeah. I've come to terms with that for the I most mean, part. But you you think this wild area is more engaging than the base game ones? Yes, because the base game one is pretty simple. Because as you saw, it's mostly just grasslands, a little water area, yeah. and there is a kind of small little desert area Some this had a lot more you know it had more stuff going on and it looks like the crown chunder is going to be um go further with that having a bunch a couple more different kind of areas and i think they even said in one of the things this was just kind of a prototype for what they're planning on moving forward in the future type thing hmm. just kind of them trying to test more stuff out as far as that says so the wild area is here to stay which i am all for because it's a lot more fun to um, as long as the wild encounters are still there for like Nuzlocke and stuff, that's that's the only thing I I want out of this. Yeah. I want that to stay. Um, but just have going around and seeing all the Pokemon like pop out and just seeing them in these environments are a lot of fun. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like the next Pokemon game routes are gone completely. Yeah, well, I I, I think routes might be gone, but I'm, I can see them still doing the. I think they'll still do the wild area stuff where yeah. it's blocked up by sections. Yeah, which they still yeah they have that. Which so yeah, they can do that. I'll be fine. Just so are there um in this in the like storyline or whatever for this? Are you going to like basically the equivalent of gyms and like challenging a bunch no. of people? Um, at something? least so far. Um, you you go to this dojo. There's a mix up. They think you're a new student. You're not. You can kind of decide to kind of say, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Or you can be like, Yeah, yeah, I'm the new student. I mean, either way, it's the same. But you can be kind of snarky if <laughs> if you want to. Um, and you go I, through I these. Yes, I'm just gifted. Yeah. Um, you go through these dojo challenges to win the dojo special armor or something, which ends up nice. being that little kung fu bear Pokemon. Nice. Um. Of course, because your character is a gift from God, um, you just ace the challenges and no one else stands a chance except your rival, but even he's fallen behind. You end the challenges by fighting um, the rival one last time. You win. You get the mm. you get cut through. And the next thing that I stopped at was go out into these the wild or, you know, this island. Um, go to the certain locations. Build your bond with Cup Fu and then... There are two different dojos, a water and a darkness one. And depending, once you get to that point, you can go into either one. And depending on which one you go to, determines um, how Cub Fu evolves. Mm. It, it's the same Pokemon. The both the evolution is called Urshifu either way. But it's either fighting dark or fighting water. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And prepare yourselves for that to be the new Smash character, JK. Um, so one of the biggest things I would be worried about going into this, and then also Ben from Easy Allies pretty much like said the thing that I, that I would be worried about. I'd be worried about the fact that when you get to the end of base Pokemon, you're so overpowered that just like you can destroy everything. It's just kind of like, at least for what I saw, like a lot, of, like it just stops being a challenge. Not that it was ever really that much of a challenge. You mean that you mean once you get through the base game, this DLC is not much of a challenge. I'm saying the the base game stops me. Like you have just such high level Pokemon, you can kind of. Like, I would worry Maybe for wild area stuff, just for everything. I mean, okay. just generally like. I mean, the game's always easy, but once you get super high in Pokemon, I think the game, at least from what I saw, is super duper easy. Yeah, I would worry that going into this DLC, it would just not be like tuned properly, and if you just went in there with like your bait, your your ending Pokemon. Okay, just, I, like, I, I got what you're saying now. So yeah. there is um. They kind of tune your levels depending, it looks like, depending on where you are in the game. Because mm. um, you can go there from the very... Be when you first go to the wild area, which if you remember is pretty early in the game, yeah. you can go there immediately. Okay. So they... I don't know how exactly it works. They I think it's based on how many yeah. badges and if you beat the Elite Four or not. Yeah, yeah. Or you, you, you become the champion or not. is based on that. Okay. Um, so I guess they could be level 10 or they can be like me, level 60, which was fine because... I, I didn't level up my Pokemon after I beat the game. Nice. So my Pokemon were f level fine. But going back to me exploring the wild area, I just used Pokemon that I caught Which in that good. area. That's what you should do. Um, you and should it was do. a lot of fun just going through and seeing, oh shit, that Pokemon's here. Oh shit, here across. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get him. <laughs> Gotta get him. <laughs> and yeah, there seems to be some more side quests going on. There's something that is the bane of everyone's existence and it's just bad. 
So, Dari, you, you think Korok seeds are bad? I mean, <laughs> oh, Korok no. seeds are probably so worse just oh, by the no. sheer number of them. You, you, as you're going to the um, dojo, there's this hiker dude that comes up, like, or you see a um, a lowland diglet, you know, a little diglet with the three hairs. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's like, "Oh, you found my diglet. Can you go find all 150 <laughs> other of my diglets, please?" Good lord. And they're all buried underground, and the only way you can tell them is the three hairs sticking out of the ground. And these are fucking Pokemon textures, Darby. Pokemon textures. <laughs> And here's the thing that sucks. The rewards, as, I mean, if you're someone that trades Pokemon through the game, have a living dex, this is nothing. Um, but you actually get Pokemon from doing this. Like, I looked at the rewards because like, I'm probably not going to do this. Let me just see what this shit is. You actually get a bunch of Alolan Pokemon. The uh, Alolan forms of po- Pokemon, like you get yeah. Alolan Vulpix. I went to got that. Then I saw it was level five. I was like, dang it. So I started leveling up so I can. it's ready for when cra- I get Crown Tundra. Mm. And it that can, it can be on my team for that because unfortunately I love like I love Alolan Nine Tails, but I had the wrong version of Sun and Moon, so I never got to use it. Wow. So I'm gonna redeem myself here. See, from the outside, this shit just seems annoying. <laughs> it's like I uh, got I got this version, so I can't get that. They just want people to I spend mean, a shit ton of money. I mean, it, it, the thing now it, it's it very easy to get those versions. I'm just lazy and don't want to deal it online. Fair, no. <laughs> very fair. Is the main thing, but I have fun with it. I'm having fun with this. Um, I've seen some people talk about there is more stuff that do in the DLC. Nothing like crazy or anything. I'm not saying that. Um, but there are some cool stuff that might happen, and you know, I'm kind of excited to see the sets Pokemon is taking, even if it's not nearly at the same pace as the rest of the industry. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's just the, Pokemon the, in general. The more I be- grow, the more I get grow up, it's like, man, I just love Pokemon. Just. Just fair. The yeah. Pokemon themselves, so just doing all the stuff with them, even if it is not as the games aren't, you know, as good or as up to date as they should be. You know, just have a good time. And we'll talk about that that particular notion in a new story. <laughs> okay. Not the very next one, but we'll get there. Ooh, teasing. Gotta, gotta, tease. gotta, gotta tickle the balls a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So at least so far, I think it's worth the money. I, put, I already put a couple hours in this, and if you, you know, it's 30 bucks for the whole pass. So this whole thing is like fifteen bucks. I got a couple hours out of it so far. I'm gonna do more. To be honest, I thought this was like thirty dollars on its own. So that's what I was like, oof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's thirty dollars for both the DLC. So I'm like, okay. At least for me, it seems to be worth it so far. Cool. Glad to hear it. Yep. (gasps) You know what else I'm glad to hear about? New Smash characters. One one character, but you know it's a new Smash character. Darby, you didn't say the thing. Let's get ready to smash. (laughs) Jingle, jingle, jingle. Oh, news, jingle, Jeff. Jingle, jingle, jingle. jingle. I'm so sorry. You know, it's just like Smash is life. You know, I just like it's it's just it's something. It it, it transcends (laughs) news. It transcends news. (laughs) So yeah, we finally got a new Smash presentation. And we finally learned who the ARMS character is. And it is just one character. And it is Min Min. Woo! Not Spring Man. Let's go. Thank Christ. This is definitely one of the good timelines. One of the good yeah. the, the good possibilities that it could have been with all the Yeah. Players. Well, uh, apparently if it's up to Sakura, we would have got to Ninjara, which might be worse than Spring Man. <laughs> apparently he's super generic or something. I know nothing about ARMS. I mean, he's a ninja and he's fine and everything, but it's just... The thing would, in my opinion, would have made it worse. Like, I, I guess, yeah, before we get into it, Min Min was one of my top two characters I wanted from ARMS, the other one being Twin Tail. I was yeah, kind of yeah, split yeah, on same. which one I would prefer, so I'm happy. Um, but what would make a Ninjara potentially worse than Spring Man? At least they put in Spring Man, it's like, okay, they're putting in the poster boy. Fine, whatever. I, I see the logic there. If, yeah. they, if they put in Ninjara, it's like... You decide not to put in the mascot and break that rule, but you're putting in fucking Ninjara and not Min Min and Twin Tail. I mean, the the lady with the with the ramen noodle arms is definitely like that's the more creative, unique choice that I that I admire. Yeah, yes. So yeah, I am very happy with Min Min for um, you know, multiple reasons. Finally, we got a DLC fighter, which is primarily a woman, or yeah, you're just a woman, cool. but. The yeah, default is a woman. Only a woman. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's a single character. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. or at least the default's a woman. Yeah. Um, and you know, person of color. 
Yeah. Which is always which a is nice little nice, bonus. Yeah, nice, nice, um, nice. And also, as far as the character herself, and the little bit of arms I played in the demo and stuff, Mimin was my main, so that, nice. that's added there. So I played around with her and stuff. I follow arms for a little bit, so it's. I feel like I'm more arms knowledge that than what my playtime. Like <laughs> it's weird. Um, definitely way more than me. Yeah. So part of the reason I like Min Min, and I'm so glad I saw it in the actual moves move set that Sakurai showed off for Min Min is. Each character in ARMS has different abilities. Um, the Like, Spring Man, for instance, just kind of, once he gets low, it helps. He kind of just gets pumped up and all kinds of stuff. Like, that's lame. Um, Twin Tail and the other character I really wanted. Her thing is kind of slowing down time, which probably would have been a counter. In the context of Smash. It probably would have been much, just yeah. like Bayonetta's counter. Pretty much, yeah. So, yeah. And, like, Ribbon Girl is another popular choice. Her thing is, just, like, double jumping. <laughs> you could have given her a triple jump, I like guess, super. in this game, but yeah. But yeah. Min Min's thing is, while Dragon Arms are something any character could use, she does have the special ability for Dragon Arms, which, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I played Arms. Um, doing certain things, you can just make no matter what your left arm is, um, it can turn into a dragon, and you can do the whole shooting lasers and that kind of stuff. Okay. So you can do that with Min Min by default. Also, she can do the whole kick thing, which is normally used to like deflect the arms and stuff which mm. sakurai went a little more with that and decided to make kicks her main um moves, a yeah. basic moves and also added in the ability to deflect projectiles which is awesome yeah yeah um obviously just the 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 fact that i mean within the context of arms men is the more exciting one just because of visual design and she's ridiculous and i love it or whatever um Obviously, there's no no uh, illusions that I really wish this wasn't ARMS, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. There's a million, million other places I wish they would have gone before this. But it's not as bad as Byleth. Uh, but from a moveset perspective, I, I thought she looked awesome. There's definitely a lot of, like, cool things that they're doing with the whole, like... The fact that you can control both arms separately with different buttons, you can like go A, B, or whatever, and do that. And you can do if you hit them both together and hold them, you can do consecutive smash attacks. Like she does one and sends the other, things like that. It's pretty yeah. interesting. And being able to send both arms in separate directions. So yeah. like, and the, on the arm stage, you can cover pretty much the whole stage. <laughs> Crazy looking, and it's just like, um, I definitely think that she kind of stands out in this game and honestly every dlc character they've put in they put in like they're putting in so much effort to make sure these dlc characters are unique and like hers being kind of a distance character but it's not a projectile base like she's Mm. still like a fighter or whatever but it's like you don't want you want to be like there's a sweet spot it seems like you know, there's a sweet spot where you want to be like two steps away and then you'll like connect great yeah, with And them you don't want to spam a particular her like you may be able to do with some projectile characters because yeah. when those arms are out, you got nothing. Right. You I, I don't know. Open. Well, I guess I do not know what the like if the arms are still out, like if she can't do kicks or anything. I guess we'll have to see how all that works. I would imagine not because I mean, like, yeah. Sakura straight up said in there, it's like, but be careful with these because you're left wide open. Yeah. yeah. Know, so. So I, would, I think until that whole animation comes back, you're probably mm-hmm. stuck. You know? Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah, which I mean, I think that, that's going to be part of the risk reward because like the high the the high end of this looks crazy. You know, you can like completely screen wipe like on the bottom, but mm-hmm. like they also talked about like if they're overhead, she doesn't really have much to deal with like someone coming overhead. Yeah, at her, I think she's going to be a difficult character to use. Are- to um, master at least so yeah I, I get why you and a bunch of people are kind of bummed about arms i'm generally more happy just because it I, in my opinion even though i didn't buy the game it's a cool new nintendo ip which i'm happy is getting yeah. love i think it has a lot of potential for, especially in a sequel and all that um but so those kind of preface to add to this mm. i'm so glad an arms character is being added as dlc and not base game just for the reasons you just said earlier that's so much care is being mm. put into DLC characters. Yeah, I don't think Min Min would be be as good and unique, especially like showing off this is what Arms is if she was a main roster character and not a DLC. Yeah, the only thing I would say against that is I think it would probably be better for Arms if people didn't have to specifically go and say I want money. I want to give you money for this Arms character because mm-hmm. obviously hardcore fans who have the battle pass are going to get her or whatever. Yeah, but I think. 
it's kind of a weird thing to be like this is a game that not many people care about like e- even i know it sold a good bit but i highly doubt that player base is still playing i mean i think a lot this this sold a lot because like the switch and you know it's a very early switch game there's not a whole lot of like build up hype for arms that like you have to generate that hype hmm. and i feel like it's kind of hard to generate that hype it, it's, it's hard to get someone who doesn't care about arms and is maybe a casual smash fan to say i'm gonna give you five dollars for this character that i don't care about you know hmm. like that th- that that would be like move set wise i agree with you but i think it would have been better for arms and hmm. selling arms if they were in the base game fair if enough they were just in there because like i promise you we will get it but like Alex and Olivia aren't buying Min Min, probably. Like, a lot of them are, for, you know, other mm. people who are kind of more casually and are probably not buying Min Min, you know. That's, that's, so, I, I think it, they're kind of, like, ARMS has an uphill battle. Mm. And it probably needs all the help it can get. And charging $5 is probably not, not the best thing for Min Min. That's why I'm hoping the rest of the battle pass is more, like, holy shit. So, then Min Min gets kind of yeah, yeah. added in there and gets to come along for the ride. Mm. But, if like all of them are like min min level, then this battle pass is probably just not going to sell as well. You know, probably not going to sell well anyways because we're farther out from the that. Too. Yeah, yeah. But, so yeah, a lot of arguments for like whether it's smart to do third party or first party and all that. No reason to get into that now. No. Let's talk more about min min. Um, I think it's dope and makes sense that her down B nor, or yeah, down B is switching between a couple yeah. arms. You makes have the little sense. boomerang one, which is like crazy flying all over the place yeah, yeah, yeah got makes sense the slow wrecking ball one that just can't really bend and make it move all crazy but it if you get hit dear lord you're gonna you're yeah. gonna take some damage <laughs> it's, it's and it's probably for us i mean for most people it's gonna be more used when we're in like four player plus battles yep yeah but i mean again just like all the other dlc characters it's like i mean they're I feel like Smash characters used to be like they have this this type of move, this type of move, this type of move, this type of move. That's a character, ship it. Whereas this one's like she basically has stances. You know, you can change that and the entire mm-hmm. moveset changes similar to like Hero with like there's yeah. so many different hidden things he can do and uh, I feel like the combo potential is going to be crazy because there's going to be things that we never thought about. It's like, oh yep. shit, you bust out <laughs> this at the right moment. You juggle them there and then bust out the thing. Yep. It's really cool. It's really very cool. Very, yep. very cool. Yeah, it'd be really cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else with her moveset. What though. was her final smash? <laughs> the final smash was um, the rest of the base arms roster comes and kind of punches them and then um, punches the opponent all together and then Min Min shoots a laser from right. her dragon arm. So it's more of a cinematic. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's more of a cinematic one, which if someone pointed out on Twitter, um, it's a callback to the arms debut trailer where right. um, Serene Man is kind of falling down and like all the other characters are kind of punching him. You see their arms kind of fly by him. Right. Right. So that's neat. Um, and way to get more of the rest of the roster represented in that game. Um, yeah. yeah. Guess we can talk about that stage real quick. Yep, <laughs> I do like it. I mean, it's it's kind of simple in a good way, but like, but still, definitely has. I mean, it's like a flat stage with one thing in the middle and two jump pads on the side. But then there's also like rails yeah, there's a jump. The- well, there's also a jump pad that I saw something that's gonna appear in the middle. Ah, okay, I didn't see that. One. So I think I don't know if it's I, you know, we'll see once we play it and everything, and I'll probably end up watching some reactions, so I'll see the stage multiple times. But um, yeah. Yeah, the whole yeah, like you're saying the whole thing overhead that you can kind of get jump or hit up into and then bounce down, which looked really cool. Yeah, um, for sure. So I'm okay. Like I know some people I seem bummed that these um stages aren't tournament legal so far in this battle pass. Mm. I can't think of any of the ones that are just by default tournament legal. You gotta right. either turn off hazards and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm okay with them if like there's so it, many damn stages in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's why I'm yeah getting at. There's so many stages. Like if Sakura has a cool idea that kind of fits like the area from that game or the game in general and all that, just do that. Don't worry about tournament legal stuff. Yeah. And that's easy for us to say because if we want to make it tournament legal, we'll just make it um the battlefield slash final destination version right, and it's just a skin anyway and yeah. you can still have the battlefield with the arms whatever yeah and i especially for like a battle pass that we are paying money for all these stages i would much rather them like have creative ideas mm-hmm. and air towards that 
rather than airing towards like yeah. competitive integrity which honestly it's nintendo they're never going to air towards competitive <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they've done a good job so far um the hero stage is pretty basic overall besides the whole moving around the whole world which is very awesome yeah so i guess there's that to propone us to it and by of stage i mean it's all kind of flat so but yeah more yeah. basic but yeah, like terry crazy. stage come on man oh, stage it's just great. so good yeah <laughs> you can't like I, I'll, I'll hear no complaints <laughs> i will not hear it <laughs> yeah so i I think they've, you know, a big part of the these passes are also staged. I think they've been, um, they've done really good so when, far. When you have a game that has to. this much GD variety, I mean, like, yeah, whatever. I mean, even if a stage comes out that you don't like, there's plenty of stages I don't like in this game, yeah. but there's so many other ones. It's yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, I think we can both generally agree. Yeah, I mean, DLC stages are all winners yeah. so far. So uh, I like them all. I like yeah. them all. Oh, yeah. Um, also, before we can move on, we mention this real quick. The rules, Darby. The rules, we all knew ARMS, the ARMS character would impact some rules. We all signed on to these rules. Yes. We knew what we were <laughs> These fan-made rules. <laughs> that are broken left and right. Yes, broken left and right, like today. <laughs> spirit, characters that have a spirit in the base game can be DLC characters. That's one of the lamer rules that you know just happened to be true up to this point because you had four third-party characters and a character wasn't even made... Didn't, was it even released yet when the game came out? Mm. But still. So what I'm saying is, Gino lives. <laughs> Gino lives. He's back, baby. <laughs> yeah. But um, Springman did not. It's not playable. So assist trophies, as far That's, as we know, cannot right be. Now that so while Luigi's still fucking dead. Yeah. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another thing is, well, I guess Sakurai kind of mentioned it. The whole um, main character. You know, it's the first one to represent the series on stuff. Sakurai said, I think there aren't people say every character is the main character. <laughs> like, just, okay. So you're you're telling me Springtron is the main character? The fucking robot version of Springman? Come on. Yeah, that's, the, that's the biggest pile of horseshit yeah. in the world. Like, you promote the one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's all we got to say on that. Yep. Um, I'm very excited to play her next week. As am I. A week from today, the 29th. Yes. Yeah, big excited to mess around with that. Maybe we can get a little stream. Definitely we haven't done Smash in a while. Yeah, I'm definitely pretty interested in her moves. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm more in like not just the fact that I wish Byleth wasn't in the game. I also like I respect Byleth's move set, but I wasn't like super excited about it. But I'm definitely more excited about this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, anyway, here's a n- cute little thing from the Arms development team. Oh, that was really good. Was I really wish good. what I'm showing Darby is if you try to find it, the Arms um, developers made one of those character posters um, for Min Min. I wish they did. They've done that with all the new characters, like they did in Smash Four. We only got it for um, Inkling, ah, which is a bummer. Yeah, but yeah. and yeah, I mean, don't need to talk about it. But yet another really cool trailer with another compl- oh, yeah. another hey. completely different art style. There's been so many different art styles with Smash I, trailers. Well, I will like, say yeah, this about that: I wouldn't mind if the Arms team decided to use that kind of art style for cutscenes and Arms. Yeah, team. it was cool. It was dope. Yeah. Oh. Okay, moving on to EA Play. Oh, Let me get them time the codes man. back up, people. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hold, hold a moment, please. <laughs> okay, we're we're good, homie. Oh we shit! Did. I put, typed in the wrong number. I'm sorry. This is the. I'm a it's fan. all falling apart, you guys. <laughs> Just like EA. No. Um. Did you watch EA play? No, okay. <laughs> that is another reason why I didn't really want to talk about it that much. But I just want to talk about the two announcements, to be honest. But. Okay, so, um, yeah, we got a couple little things in here. Um, we kind of go through it. We don't talk about all these in great depth, yeah. but first thing that happened, Apex Legends had the Switch and Steam were cross-play. Who, oh boy, that's not going to run well on Switch. Horrible. But don't play this game for us on Switch. Yeah. yeah. But the good news is cross-play. Yeah. Um, that's just the theme of this. They talked about cross-play, 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 which, which considering it's EA, that, that is good because... People will follow that. Yeah. If no. all those big, like all their big games have no, cross-play. It officially happened. We are yep. we are hurling towards the area where if you don't have cross-play, people are going to like, what the hell? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? you know? That's only good for us. Oh, yeah. Consumers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Sims 4 is now available on Steam. Cool. Um, seven EA games are coming to Nintendo Switch this year, including Apex and... Uh, some car game. I can't remember which one. Is it might be a need for speed. I don't know. <laughs> I should have wrote that down. Okay, let's get into the next one. Hayes Life's Joseph Fares announces it takes 
two. <laughs> like I'm always going to think Take Two. <laughs> take Two. Joseph Forrest got bought out. <laughs> Joseph Forrest bought Take Two. It's crazy. So he, he made owns, so much from he away out. Owns Rockstar. <laughs> now, so we we didn't see too much from this game. We know it's coming from 2021. We saw oh, yeah. some concept art and like little stuff like that. A little bit of footage, mm-hmm. and based on that and its kind of description. I'm in. Yes. And like <laughs> Joseph Forrest is just such a like genuine dude. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I want the whole presentation. I'll get through uh, yeah. at the end. I might mention how it all was as a whole, oh, yeah. but his set, like the whole indie segment when they were talking, I actually really enjoyed that part nice. just yeah. because the way they originally started it, they had them kind of talking about like general indie or a smaller team stuff, but they had them all drawn like animated and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. And it was really cool. And then for each game they had, the team talk and it was really cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we all were, you know, most of us were curious. Um, me and you both really liked a way out. Yes. Um, wanted more of that. We're not getting a way out too, but we're getting something kind of in the spirit of with the whole co-op thing. It's just right. going to be completely different, a new art style and all that mm. kind of stuff. And I am all here for it. Which, yeah. Honestly, I mean, I would have been fine with an oh, way out to or another game exactly like that with different characters. or something. I would have been fine with that, but I think, Honestly, with someone like Joseph Harris and like the team behind that, I think the best case scenario is that they keep the co-op thing. I think that was the thing that everyone thought was so unique. And like, yeah. I have a bunch of like, um, like my, my, my sister and brother-in-law played that game and loved it. Like, I've seen like everyone who's played it is like, wow, this was really different, really yeah. good, or whatever. And it's like, so like, I'm glad that the co-op nature is still there, but I'm also kind of glad that Joseph Harris just gets to do whatever yeah, uh, well, thing I'm, he wants to do. I'm gonna, to I'm stealing it. this set line of thought from Daniel Blower from Easy Allies because you kind of summed it up very well and made me think I, I completely agree with this something I didn't really think of when I you know I kind of said a way out too would be great it's like with, with a mind like his and like you know with the ideas he has you don't want him to be stuck on one franchise slash idea for like 10 years yeah. you want him to keep on experimenting from game to game you don't game. want him to become the a way out guy y- and yeah it's just and like, oh. Like you said, the co-op was the main thing from that game we really wanted yeah. them to expand on. And the fact they are doing that just in a completely different way is very exciting. And mm. Definitely shoots us up my Yeah, I wouldn't mind list. if that becomes his niche, niche or whatever is the co-op thing because like still no one's doing that. I've still yeah. never played anything quite like A Way Out. Like there's mm-hmm. co-op games, but the fact that it was like a story experience that you go through co-op like that is still very unique. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm I'm down for a completely different game, but using that same yeah you know, yep core same thing. general idea yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So, I completely agree yep so we will surely talk about that game when we get more information whatever it comes yeah yep. probably a ways out <laughs> probably <Yep>. a way out <laughs> <laughs> I can see game awards yeah maybe for, fuck the Oscars <laughs> <laughs> fuck the Oscars no, actually I'm gonna put it right now it's probably definitely the game yeah. awards <laughs> Jeff yeah. Keighley will want to bring where he made his yeah. name <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know if you saw this, but they actually used footage from that. They bleeped it out, but and they blurred the middle finger. <laughs> it was great. Fudge the Oscars. Yeah. The next game was a highlight for me as well. Zoink Game announces Lost in Random. Have you seen this one? I have not. Pull up that trailer. Because this game looks dope. It's like a Nightmare Before Christmas type shit. Like Nightmare Before, before Christmas meets Coraline. You, you you want my? You want I know my, I know how you take. feel. <laughs> really I know don't like you that. really don't like that movie. What is it called? No, no, just um, lost random. Lost in random. Lost in random. Yes. Okay. okay. It looks really awesome. You have this nice little girl character, and she has a little dice companion. No, right, well, you, you keep talking as I as I watch this. The people can't see this. So. Yeah, the people can't see. They're always watching dark colors. Oh, well, you don't that. have to. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to narrate. I know. Me. I know. <laughs> no, no. It, um, I, do, I do like the art style. Yes. Yeah. This is a you know the the next game they showed. This is from the Fay Fee whatever you call developers. Oh, okay. If you need a title to go to it, this looks like a step up from there. I yes. love the way this game looks. The way um, they show some gameplay in here, and it looks pretty cool too. Um, definitely has me a lot more interested than um, Fafy, whatever. Um, so this is uh, two EA games and one conference that I definitely want to keep my eyes on. Yeah, is, it, is this another indie one too? Yeah, another EA like, originals. Yeah, yeah, yeah EA original, but yeah. that whole thing. Yeah, this definitely has a very immediately like um distinguishable art style. Yes, whereas like Faye was pretty, but I don't think it quite. 
no. stood out in comparison. It kind of just looked like indie game, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this almost looks like claymation almost in a way. Yeah. It's like something like, yeah, very Tim Burton. Very, very Tim Burton mm-hmm. in, in art style. Yeah, that, that's, that, that was cool. Looking. The, yeah, I think this yeah. is also 2021, so that is exciting. Definitely yeah. Keep an eye above those. Absolutely. Dope. Um, Rocket Arena, the TVT Rocket game, gets a new trailer and will be released on July 14th. Yep, that close. Um, this game looked okay. It's like an Overwatch like hero thing, but you use a bunch of rockets and stuff. Like neat. So it'll probably die. Probably. Um, I don't want it to because I don't want things to fail, but well, yeah. no, of course not, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Star Wars Squadrons gameplay finally revealed. It looks pretty cool. It's a very pretty game. I mean, just... I want to get in there in VR. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a pilot. Yeah, I wonder it blow how... shit up. I wonder how that will do. I'm, I'm really surprised to see like a big EA game coming out still doing a VR yeah. support thing. Mm-hmm. I, I hope it's I'm going to write for reviews um, because I mainly want this for the VR, but I am interested. Yeah. I'm interested in a Star Wars game, guys. We Ooh. did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it could have been any flight game, and he would have. <laughs> I, I like the Star Wars aesthetics. So that adds to it, honestly. And I think this. Um, I mean, for all of Battlefront 2's faults, and apparently it's gotten a lot better. But for all of its faults or whatever, and the original Battlefront, I mean, the sound design mm-hmm. and, and the graphics and everything were stunning in there because, like, they actually got like real models from the movies and everything, and just it really did just running around in battlefield it sounded like a star wars battlefield you were in or battlefront sorry um so i think that is carrying over to this when you're looking at it it's like definitely when you compare this to like older star wars like flight things or the flight sections in the old battlefront games um and all that this it's pretty crazy how like much it looks like a movie or it looks real or something and i love 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 the choice to have like you don't have like a video gamey view like and maybe you can but like at least when they show you don't have like the third person like you're looking at the the ship no it actually looks like you are a pilot in a cockpit it's all in first person yeah it's all in first person it looks like you are the pilot of the cockpit and you even like your view is kind of limited like in a good way Mm. it's like it feels immersive that's what gets more excited with the vr stuff like actually being in the star wars world yeah. and doing all that stuff and i'm is hoping a lot of fun. that like all of the hud is like in the ship yeah like there is no game hud that's mm-hmm. what i'm hoping i that, hope it's like from what it, i like, saw maybe it looks like, looks like up, all, it's like it yeah. looks like all the stuff that okay yeah there might be some little words here and there potentially i can see it but most of the part way. all the kind of like mini map and that kind of crap looks like it's going to be actually in the cockpit which that is that's just really cool well and um, I know this is EA and everything. The thing that done with Star Wars, people are are right to be wary of how they do things. They've said no microtransactions, but I know people have said before and then add them later, but I don't think EA is going to try to pull that on people. No, I don't um, think they will too. I mean, they also did that with um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order when they were like, it's a Star Wars game and no micro like. It's kind of obnoxious to me, the performative, and we have no microtransactions. Aren't you proud of us? It's like, you know, yeah. just that, that, that whole thing. I might be remembering, I don't think they, well, they did it to the Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I don't, to the credit, from what I've seen, I don't think they're doing that with this game. I think they're just rightfully, like, I think it's okay to point it out with this game in particular. Yeah. Because it's the game that screams microtransactions. I was watching Easy Allies' reaction, and they were saying, I'm um, worried like the microtransactions and at yeah. the time I already knew there weren't going to be any in there right. so I think this is the right one to be like okay guys there, don't worry it's not going to be yeah, microtransactions fair. also it's going to be 40 bucks also it, it's going to have a full single player campaign oh by the way it's also going to have all these multiplayer modes I think they're doing this they're right they're doing everything <laughs> right yeah. the, they nailed the gameplay this should do really my well. biggest worry is like me personally being captivate and interesting for an entire game that is only flying around and shooting things yeah like uh, it's definitely like i mean it, and there are there are definitely other people that have no worry about that being enough like there's other mm-hmm. people that's going to be like a-okay with them 
I definitely like it looks amazing and I love the like no HUD I love the immersive lateness of it and everything and just how like I remember doing these kind of missions or whatever in Battlefront and this just like fucking blows out of the way visually and sound wise I respect all of that but I could totally see myself potentially getting bored with just no. lack of variety because there's probably only so much you can do mm -hmm. you know in a cockpit thing doing this so like that would be my biggest worry is that this overstays its welcome or really doesn't even for $40 doesn't really feel like it'd be a full thing. Cause like, I'm not really into like flying shooting games. I, I don't know, you know, like yeah, I'll play Ace Combat or something like that. Like none of those like speak to me. The only reason this one would speak to me is because of the Star Wars. So like, <laughs> I'd be, I, I'd need to see that, but yeah. at least for a first trailer, you know, it looks very mm -hmm. interesting. And I, and I want to see how the single player versus multiplayer split. Like, is it, you know, primarily multiplayer because like the Battlefront Two single player is pretty bad. <laughs> like for, I've seen people play pretty much the whole thing, and it's not good. So we'll see. Sports trailer. Yeah. So skate. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want to mention the thing that's right before that, just real quick. They did a little next gen tech teaser montage thingamajig. Where they show off um, Battlefield, Need for Speed, and fucking Dragon Age just by saying it's a Bioware game. It's like, you can't show anything more. Not nothing. Th like, that's lame. Okay, Dar, we can talk about Skate now. Yeah! <laughs> There's not a whole lot to talk about because it's apparently incredibly early in development. Like... So, so early, I heard rumors they called them the morning of. <laughs> They're like, what, 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 guys, they said we could do it. They finally Shit. called us. Hello. Um, uh, but despite, like, I really did think if the if this was being made, I would have assumed that it was already being made and that yeah. we would be a lot further along. So that's a bummer. But hey. Baby, I'll take what I can get. It's I played the shit out of the um, first three skate games. Like I probably put freaking hundreds of hours because like there was just something so relaxing. I love I re and it's weird because I straight up don't like the Tony Hawk games. Mm -hmm. I think they're boring as hell. But the skate games I absolutely love. It was something about the open world skate thing mm -hmm. and just having this entire city that you can go and do and like you can go into the city and grind on all this and then you can go out to like the country areas and grind off of random <laughs> things out there it's just like it was just a dope game it was just <laughs> really like relaxing and everything and like i hope i would enjoy it in the modern time i think i would though i mean i i could see myself just skating around yeah it should be fun yeah so I I mean I'm very excited. I really a lot more excited. didn't know if this was I was kind of fifty fifty on if this would ever actually happen. Yeah. So that's very exciting. Yep. Very exciting. Now, as far as this thing in the presentation overall, I mean it's not a bad list of things. Make it a cut yeah. out some filler and stuff in there. By EA play standards, yeah, this yeah is a I mean that's so part of my thing. I came out as like more positive than other people. <laughs> but I had such low standards to begin with the fact there was like there are a couple things in here I actually enjoyed and all yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people say, like, this is, this is such a terrible EA play. I was like, are there good EA plays? Did I miss one? Did I miss yeah. one of the good ones? I was like, yeah. It was about 40 minutes. I mean, the way they presented things weren't terrible. Greg Miller hosted the, the jokes were, of course, corny and all that. They did this thing that could have been cool where they did, like, a Sesame Street find the letter shit. But it just said, e like, like... Make sure you write down the letters, and they literally just spelled out an order. EA Play Live, That's terrible. Like yeah. Blood War, so it should have been Skate. That would or have been that. so hype if they spelled Skate. Like, oh, <laughs> oh shit! Or even yeah, we may not do it in order, but yeah, just do the letters leading up to it. And then at the and end, so it's like, okay, here are the letters. <laughs> Let's. What do you think it could be? Then go into it. Yeah. It'd have been cute and dumb, but it would have been better than what they did. Yeah, that sounds like some random dude just had an idea that was not fleshed out at all. Yeah, but. Overall, some cool announcements. The indies look good. Yep, I am excited for those. And let's talk about Pokemon. I thought we already talked about Pokemon. Well, Darby, before this DL, DL MMC came out, um, they decided to have a Pokemon Presents, which literally, I guess, came out. They did it like right before the DLC came out. I think it came out like right after it was over. But um, let's go over what they had there a little bit. Pokemon Smile, Darby! A mobile game that helps you brush your teeth and you get Pokemon in your mouth. Shall we move on? <laughs> we shall. Um, Pokemon Cafe makes it a little game where you solve puzzles with Pokemon in little cafe outfits. Shall we move on? 
<laughs> Art style's cute. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, that one got one comment. All right, okay. let me move on. We got new Pokemon Snap, baby, after 20 fucking years. Yeah, let's just move on. Shall we move on? <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, this was the big announcement, and I was like... I saw that. I was like, huh. I kind of wish I actually set up an announcement <laughs> reaction yeah. thing for this. <laughs> just didn't expect that. No, I didn't really yeah, expect much Pokemon anything. Sleep last year, this thing. Right? Yeah, I, I just expected, okay, I'll watch this before I go to work. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, the internet kind of it was set on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they show a trailer. Um, has like all these Pokemon in these nice looking environments and everything. Like it's like Poke Park or some shit. And then at some point, you see a Pikachu in the camera lens. You're like, so, oh shit! I, I love seeing everyone's re- um, reactions as the, soon as the camera lens yeah. came up. <gasps> <laughs> the motherfuckers finally did it. They announced Pokemon Snap. I am just so morbidly curious to see how this goes in the modern day because as, I am me, too. as me and you like had a conversation on the side like this just kind of screams to me as something that did this come out in the 1999 okay it was the 90s yeah this screams to me like a 90s type game that like little kids really and I completely get why like everyone little kids in the 90s enjoy it or whatever mm-hmm. I just wonder if in 2020 that game is just boring as hell in 2020 like i I really that would be my instinct is to say that a lot of the people who think they really want this will get it and probably not even finish it because like it'll be boring i hope that's not true i hope that's not true yeah um so to be fair i've never even seen pokemon snap i've just heard about it so yeah yeah, yeah. so a couple things as far as that goes nostalgia will carry it for some people that might be what do is for me but also as i mentioned earlier in the pokemon um, sort or shield DLC discussion. Just doing stuff for Pokemon, kind of seeing their natural habitats enough to maybe make me happy. Um, obviously, I'm gonna need a little more than just basic going around, maybe taking pictures, depending on how it all goes and all that. Because, um, PSA, um, this is a full sixty dollar game. Oh, I was thinking yikes. it might have been forty. Fucking it's full yikes. sixty dollars. Um, so Jesus. yeah. So yeah, there's that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Uh, maybe. Um, but as far as people potentially, you know, liking this modern age, nostalgia would do it for some, um, for sure. Some people that just kind of that jolly vibe is all people yeah. need. And also, as far as adults liking it that don't have the nostalgia, I'm just going to point to this. The Easy Hella streamed it. And there are a couple of them, in, like primarily Ian Hink, who has no nostalgia for Pokemon whatsoever or that game, yeah. absolutely loved it. And he's like, for. But I mean, like, yeah, the stream scenario with a bunch of your friends, like, that might be fun. But if yeah. you're just a dude who <laughs> doesn't have that nostalgia, I don't know, you know. No, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see. Saying like adults can enjoy it, even if it's a stream situation, it might be fun for us to do it a little bit. But as far as like, um, because you brought and you know, understandably so, you brought up a question in our group chat mm. with um Will and Jacob. Like, I was trying to be respectful. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He was sorry. He's kind of like, so is all you do take pictures, which I think is a fair question. Um, there's a little more to it than that, not like a crazy amount to it necessarily, and who knows what they might change here or what they yeah. t- try to, you know, how they decide to mix things up because it's been 20 years. Um, yep. But a lot of it is kind of kind of light pu- puzzle sh- solving, trying to figure out, like, you go through these levels multiple times. You are meant to go through multiple mm. times. Figuring out how you can take the best picture of these Pokemon, because you get points for um, the best picture as far as them being... Like fully in the frame, they're being like completely in the frame and taking up most of the space in the picture. Them doing an action or um doing something with another Pokemon or all these crazy things like evolving and all that. So what you're supposed to do through this game is kind of like a Metroidvania style things in some ways. Where throughout the game you get these items that you can use to um interact with the Pokemon and different Pokemon react to things in different ways and we see that a little bit in the trailer with how pokemon react to getting an apple thrown at them yeah um it's how you get pictures and all that and you can kind of do that and they're kind of some hidden stuff you can find because in the first game in each level there was a hidden pokemon where na- the natural landscape or gas or anything could form the look of a pokemon and part of the main mission of the game was to find those as well as take pictures of all the other pokemon yeah, and do yeah. that and there's more to it and the, they're deuce, they're 
um, Gaming Complain, I believe, pointed out by looks at some stuff in the trailer that might be multiple paths in each level. Yeah. It's because it was just one path. Yeah, before. I basically just hope that they add enough into into it to where like you felt like I just played the puzzle game. Yeah, but like, even if it's not like a hard puzzle game, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. Something. Honestly, I hope, a, I hope there's a hub world, a hub world where you have like. <laughs> honestly, it's a weird thing. Like me trying to think about the stuff to explain this to you just got yeah. me more excited for games. Like, I just love that game. <laughs> Fair enough. It just I mean, gives yeah. me the warm fuzzy. So I'm probably going to get this game. The sixty dollars is a bit ouch. Um, that's for sure. Honestly, crazy to me. Yeah, <laughs> like I thought there was no way in hell at sixty dollars. That's pretty wild yeah but let's see how the whole game goes before how much in it um as far as the actual quality of the thing um how laboratories worked on the first game um but this time pe- people noticed in the you know right sections or whatever bandai namco is developing this game which is cool yeah but that's, that's probably a good sign as yeah. well. especially from a visual standpoint and my my reaction was <laughs> How about instead of Pokemon Snap, you just give actual Pokemon to Ben Namco? <laughs> or like a full on RPG. To Where's Pokemon 2? It could be next Wednesday on Pokemon Presents. Because <laughs> at the very end, they announced. Uh, they had. Well, it's, the guy teased at the end, we got another big project to announce mm, next week exciting. on Pokemon Presents. Exciting. <laughs> well, tune in to the next podcast, and maybe we'll have. Uh, it's probably going to be Let's Go Johto. I don't want to. So, right. Yeah, my dear reaction to that, we don't know the time of it yet, unfortunately. I don't know why we don't have a time, but yeah. Twitch.tv slash Nerds Gaming. All right, we got to move. We got to move. Cool. We got zombies to talk about. They're not zombies. They're infected. They're, they're freakers. <laughs> we got Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. It's about time we got this game. Fantastic name. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I don't I spend too much time um, making fun of video games for their bad names because to be fair, there are a ton of bad video game names. I don't spend enough time complimenting the good ones. This is a fucking good one. Yeah. Cause it works on the the game is literally about time. Hmm. But it also works on the it's about time. It's a, it's just a good name. I know where I got this game, man. Um, so, super happy for everyone else. I couldn't care less about Crash Bandicoot. I just don't enjoy the <laughs> games. I just I just really don't enjoy like the endless runner type game mm-hmm. like that for the most part. I mean like I'm excited. It looks yeah. cool. Definitely a step up in graphics and all that. Like they're doing some crazier stuff with the actual environments and level design and all that. Um, it's coming out October 2nd. It's being developed by Toys for Bob, who did the Spyro remakes. Okay, so they did not do the Crash trilogy. No, the Tony Hawk remake people are doing. <laughs> did the Crash <laughs> Everyone's remakes. going yeah. all over the place. Yeah, yeah so this is exciting. Um, this is also a $60 game. I, I think this is less surprising than Pokemon Snap. Yeah, it's a brand new Crash Bandicoot game. No, no, yeah. I, this one, my gut reaction would be that this one's more deserving of the sixty dollars title. Oh, uh, I agree. If you just that, you know, some people, yeah. I think, I had questions since Insane Trilogy was forty. Yeah. Um, Dory, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts, or let me rant about Kingdom Hearts for like a minute. You have the floor, Jeff. Okay, so we got a new Kingdom Hearts game, baby. It's called Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. This leaked. I saw this, I was like, it's probably going to be a rhythm game. Please, for the love of God, don't be a rhythm game. It's a fucking rhythm game. It's coming out this year on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Kingdom Hearts on the Switch, Darby. Of course, this is the game that's on. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. And the, the title, it makes perfect sense. Because you're going through all this rhythm stuff. And that's where the twist in the trailer comes in. Where at you know, the beginning, they show the rhythm section. Like, okay, I can completely ignore this. I was a fucking <laughs> fool. Then they show fucking cutscenes, and there's Kyrie, and she's trying to do shit. She's trying to find <laughs> Sora, and apparently she does this through a weird rhythm game, going through S- Sora's journey or something. And that we get any more story, a fucking course, and apparently. <laughs> The DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3 started Phase 2 of Kingdom Hearts. Darby, we just on the beginning of Phase 2. <sighs> so yeah, I'm not getting this game. Just getting started, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, I am not getting this game unless they announce something that's crazy about it and uh, the actual gameplay. I will look up the cutscenes on YouTube, but I'm not buying this game. Yeah, you are a fool you to, to expect any Kingdom Hearts game. I was a crazy story. fool. I had a second of innocence. Like one full minute of innocence before I was like, oh shit, this is canon. 
Yeah, this game looks terrible, Jeff. Yeah, this so people are ex- <laughs> people are actually excited for the gameplay part of it based on the Final Fantasy one. And I'm looking at this and like, I I didn't look much about the it's Final Fantasy one in the years. PS2 models. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Insane. Like, man, at least the one I remember for the Final Fantasy rhythm game, it had a cute little art style and all that kind of stuff going on for it. Yeah, like you said, this is just the PS2 models kind of going through that, and it looks slow as hell. It looks like a phone game. I'll be honest. Is it coming I, out I don't on disagree. <laughs> No. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, so yeah, I'm not interested in play, actually playing this game. Of course, I'm going to watch some cutscenes because <laughs> you will have to have at least seen those cutscenes to know what the fuck is going on in Phase Two. You bet, baby. We could talk about how where Kingdom Hearts is going in another podcast, and that'll be the entire podcast, and I will be asleep. Yes, but Darby. You're going to be sleeping till November. Cause, yeah, I am. Because that's when Cyberpunk comes out now. Cyberpunk got delayed to November 19th. Fucking hurts. This one hurts a it lot. It fucking hurts. As soon as Je- like Jeff put it in the group text, and I just immediately was <laughs> just as soon as I saw it. Like, Jeff, like, you can take this back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, take it back right now, Jeff. <laughs> you, you, you can say this is a joke now because I didn't, I didn't post the actual screenshot. It's like, it yeah, it's a joke. Right? It's a, it was a cruel prank. <laughs> like, so, uh, but what sucks about this more than anything? I mean, uh, the reason for it is fine. There's going the game's pretty much done. They're just ironing up some bugs, which cool. I mean, okay, that, fine. That was pretty much the reason for the September delay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the um, same reason. So cool. Yeah, fine. That's nice. Um, the pro- <laughs> main the reason I'm sad all this is because my September was pretty clear around there yeah. and. November slash console launch time is when things look like they were going to get crazy with all these games that w- got announced like at the PlayStation event and stuff and are continuing to get announced. So that's just a hey. bad time. And this game is supposed to be one that consumes your life. And yeah. now, Darby, it's probably not going to happen, but we could have we probably could have had this game done before game like game of the year time. No. We're not. That's not happening now. No. no, God, we're, no. We're, especially when we're going to try to probably... Take a do a couple other maybe games maybe next time. year's game. Yeah, is, <laughs> yeah but that, it does suck because I mean things like Kina. Yeah. No fucking way. I'm playing that around launch time now. You know. Yeah. I'll probably play Miles Morales with my uh, sister and brother in law. So I'll probably just play it over there. But like, yeah, all my time here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Bryce, it is Miles. for me, not Darry, because he has a new fancy smancy PC. Yeah. Is oh, that's part of the reason I got it right now is because of Cyberpunk. Though. Yeah. I'll play this on my PS5 now instead of my laptop, probably. Yeah. So there's that. So cool. Yeah. Fucking bummer. Sorry, I but hope you're liking this pace right now. But you know what's not a, a bummer or is a bummer? I don't know. How do you feel about this one? <laughs> Let's get into it. We got some WB news. First off, WB announced DC fandom, dumb, whatever. Um, Happening on August 22nd, all things DC, TV shows, comics, movies. We're going to learn about the Snyder Cut. Cool. Yeah. But most importantly, as far as this podcast is concerned, they said WB is going to have some game announcements there. And considering this is a DC thing, that can only mean two things. <laughs> One, we're How finally going to fucking it? learn about that fucking Batman game. And two... We're going to fucking learn what Rocksteady's been working on. And apparently, both have leaked. So, yeah, let's get into that shit. Let's get into that uh, shit. First, talk about Batman. Apparently, it's just called Gotham Knights. That doesn't give us anything more than we were already t- knew. So, cool. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, no, Gotham Knights sounds like it's a partying, drinking game in Gotham. You're like, you're going on a bar crawl yeah. in Gotham. <laughs> um, oh, now, the biggest news is what Rocksteady's working on. This is an older rumor, but it's resurfaced again and it seems to be more concrete. Um, apparently they're working on a Suicide Squad game. Yes, which, which um, has a lot of people very upset. Um, I'm not as upset as most people. Not just because I haven't seen the movie, but because I'm not basing all yeah. DC stuff off the movies. That's true. I've, I, I I've, to... <laughs> because I've seen Suicide Squad and other stuff, and they're fine. <laughs> yeah, no, people need to realize that Suicide Squad on their own in general concept is not bad and there could have been a good version of that movie that yeah. movie was just a terrible heads so it was like chopped and screwed until it wasn't it's, a, movie yeah, it was just a bad movie <laughs> yeah i do it is interesting i wonder like when they started working on this i wonder if it was like sometime around that movie time when they started working on this and suicide squad was like maybe they thought suicide squad was going to be a super big name I mean, don't suicide squad coming around came here came out um but no suicide squad in 26 theory. came out in 2016 
It probably would have been after it came, or about then, I guess. I mean, but they would have known it was being worked on. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, you know, they're internal with WB. It might have been like Suicide Squad's going to come out and it's going to be hot shit. And then y'all yeah, are going to yeah. have this and it's going to be even hotter shit. And it was long enough before they could have changed easily changed course. It sounds like Rock City had a couple of bump issues on the way. Yeah, I would imagine so with how long it's been. So I, I think this game was probably supposed to come out. Probably like 2018, 2019, something like that. Maybe. Um, um, so another important thing is based on the rumors, it sounds like these are both, I mean, timing wise, they make sense. It's just ne- straight up next gen titles. Yeah. Maybe not cross gen. So, so do you people... expect this to be a bat, a, like Batman Arkham type of game as far as the like 3D brawlery, whatever thing like that? Or do you expect it to be a pretty big departure from like, that type of thing? <sighs> Similar maybe vibe and stuff. I can see it probably keeping gameplay wise. I feel like you gotta change it up at least some because you at least have to have multiple characters just switching between like all yeah. And, and a lot of the Suicide Squad members, like, depending who they pick, I guess. But I mean, some of them would definitely work in Batman stuff. But then you gotta tone some of them down and just do all that kind of stuff. And I don't. Know, I don't think they a lot of characters work as well with that. My main fear is that if they pull an Avengers and it's like exactly like that, and also it doesn't look as interesting. As uninteresting as that. Also, apparently, something very important to point out. Where the hell did I put that? Oh no. Um. Um. Well, apparently, the website thing leaked for it, which is or a domain name leaked, and apparently, um, it might be called Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Which that's an interesting name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Which could be a cool <laughs> idea for yeah. story. You just going around killing the Justice League. That could be pretty cool. And. It, what would potentially get me excited about that premise? It could be, it could easily be too grim, dark, um, yeah, and all that. It could very easily could, but if you're going to do that and they have to fight the Justice League and do all that, you got to get creative with that gameplay than just the Arkham stuff. Yeah, I think, yeah. in my opinion. So I'm very curious. I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. I'm not like again, just the idea of a Suicide Squad game doesn't like turn me off as much as I've seen a lot of the internet. Um, yeah. Last couple days, but I'm very interested to see how they do it. Just, I guess after, the main thing is after Avengers, uh, the idea of having a team superhero game scares me at the moment it, of what kind of game it actually will be. It's not easy to have like a game that like you have multiple playable characters mm-hmm. and make it work, especially like in a single player context. I mean, the immediate thing when you have like a multiple team thing like that, you think multiplayer, but mm-hmm. I hope it's not. I, mean, I wouldn't think it would be, but it's interesting. You know, it's. Nope. It's a hard thing to balance, but people, you know, people like that or whatever. I would have to be sold quite a bit because I don't even like the Arkham games, but uh, yeah, I'm interested. It uh, lives and dies off of how well they realize those characters, though. You know, yeah. If their Harley Quinn is just as cringy as movie Harley Quinn, then uh, this whole thing's going to collapse. Harley Quinn confirmed. Deadshot confirmed. That's the only one I can think. Yeah, that only one could be. There, there are a bunch of other ones that are likely, but those are the only two. I'm like, they're definitely Cat in. and Boomerang. He's probably Slipknot. In. Slipknot will be OP. I'm calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> he will be the most played character, and they'll have a Corey Taylor skin. <laughs> Please give him the mask. Okay, Darby, it's time. Well, speaking of Grim Dark. <laughs> This time, let's talk for the about Last of Us Part Two. The Last of Us Part Two. It's finally here. Seven years of waiting. It's been eighty-two years. <laughs> uh, again, we are going to be spoiler-free for the vast majority of this conversation, and then um, we will make it very clear when we go into a brief spoiler conversation. But, and I just realized I forgot to say it at the top of the show, but whatever, I'll say it again next week. We are going to be doing a Last of Us um, Part 2 spoiler cast with Respawn Aim Fire. With Chad Michael Ennis for Respawn Aim Fire. Um, it's going to be on the Respawn... I, I imagine it's going to be on the Respawn Aim Fire podcast feed. We're doing it mm-hmm. with... the Respawn Aim Fire is hosting this time, not us. Um, so I imagine it'll be on the Respawn Aim Fire podcast feed and the, the Respawn Aim Fire YouTube channel. But uh, if you follow us, Nerds at Large, on Twitter or Respawn Aim Fire on Twitter... You'll get all them hot links and all that other stuff. All them hot takes. And the hot takes. All the hot takes come flowing, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, but me and Jeff will probably also do our own um, Last of Us spoiler content after that at some point on our channels here. But we don't have like 
hard plans for that. But knowing us and what we just did with Final Fantasy VII Remake, you'll probably get more stuff from us here too. And especially if Will and Jacob play. Yeah. So that being said, let's talk about The Last of Us Part Two. Um, I am about... 15 and a half hours in i think you're the about the same amount right but apparently you are a tad bit ahead of me i spoiled darby he did spoil but you fair to me he did ask <laughs> i did ask i just assumed that i was still i i, I had been ahead of jeff the whole time this is the first so time we jeff assumed <laughs> how about how far in front of me do you think you are not too too far maybe an hour okay so we're, we're both like a good bit into the game don't 100 percent know because we're not going to look up that kind of stuff but you know enough to have like um opinions and everything so jeff Dar- with- darby, darby you're, you're missing the main thing here you have opinions even if you haven't played the game wait what you can't you can have a p- uh, complete opinions even if you haven't played the game yeah the, if you look at the internet yeah apparently I, I can just go ahead and tell you right now the game fucking sucks <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jeff, both The Last of Us for both of us is in our top five of all time, I think, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so, with that framework in mind, is The Last of Us Part 2 living up to your expectations and why? Yes. <laughs> um, yes, so for a non-spoilery story thing, because story is a big part of The Last yes. of Us, it's going in interesting places that I didn't expect to go. It is very interesting. I see how some people just don't like the general general direction of the story even if i don't agree though i don't get all the vitriol that is going on but um i feel like just the way the general story is going it helps kind of it helps tells us why they're a part two you know had to be made or yeah, yeah. it makes me feel yeah. better about it actually being it made justifies itself yeah, that's pretty the word quickly, i'm trying to look for yes. justify um because you know we were both kind of like when it was announced we were excited but like did this need to be made? Right. And uh, it's one of those things that The Last of Us... I mean, The Last of Us was a fantastic game the whole way through. And I was always going to be like, all right, this this is something transcendent. This is something I'm always going to remember. But I think, for me personally, it went from a great game to definitively in my top five all time. It will probably stay there for the rest of my life because of the ending. I think the ending of The Last of Us is just masterful. Mm-hmm. It is like my probably my favorite ending of anything ever. I just adore the decision that they made at the end of The Last of Us. It's so much so that, like, yeah, I really, if you had asked me, I would have said, don't make another one. Just leave it there. Leave it right there. Um, but I had faith in Naughty Dog, and I think that faith was well, um, well put because pretty early on in this game, I like you start playing, and it's like okay, they had they had this. This was in Neil's head. This was in the writers' mm-hmm. heads and everything. And as soon as you get like, I have been from minute one of this game they've been asking questions and I've been so interested to find the answers to them. Mm -hmm. And I think overall, like the story, like it's very climactic, lots of crazy stuff happens, but I think it is moving at a slower pace than the original in a good way. In a, like the, the questions are very slowly being answered Mm -hmm. for you. Like, you you know, you're going through a lot of this game, not quite, having the full picture of everything yeah. that's going on and that's supposed to be intentional mm-hmm. you know i think the way that they're revealing things is great pace oh yeah i agree yeah i've seen some people um criticize the kind of slow nature of it but with last of, i mean depending on the game but like for the last of us and especially the way the last of us two do it i enjoy the slow burn i enjoy I the like yeah getting that little piece of information i love just going around the world you know, most of the time with um, whatever, whoever your companion is and then mm. just talking you, you ha- yeah. and you having more reasons to explore these kind of off beaten paths, like going into certain buildings that you would not get the certain um, conversation slash cut scene if you did not go into said building or room. Right. Which is very nice. They, you had a little bit of that stuff in Last of Us, but I feel like Last of Part 2 is just a lot more open to where there's a lot more of this missable stuff and you don't want to because you just love these characters and their relationships with each other. And just the simplest, like, I mean, Naughty Dog just has something special when it comes to character building and character relationships. 
and they have nailed that whole character banter as you're moving around and that feeling natural and not feeling mm. video gamey like there's cut scenes in this but it kind of feels like you never leave the cut scene because like the dialogue that's happening in between there is almost just as interesting if not more than some of the big climactic mm. things because yeah, and just the i mean I, and I feel like Naughty Dog has always been good at that, but this is obviously the like next big level of that because like the characters like you never really get to that point where it's like okay I've ex- exhausted all the dialogue options so they're just going to be quiet for hours now or you know quiet as I explore this whole place. I was like one of the it's not supposed to say there's a, a a few like kind of more open areas it's not like completely open world or something like that but there's some like open areas where you can choose what order you do things. And I was in that area for a very long time and still getting brand new dialogue mm-hmm. options where like the things that the people were saying between each other. And it's all just, I think when it comes to facial acting and voice acting, this is definitively the second best I've ever seen with Red Dead Red Redemption 2 being number one. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of things about Last of Us that I say this is the second best version of video game, like a thing I've seen in a video game behind Red Dead Redemption 2. There might also be some similarities between those two when we get to once we're done the game if we're still as high on it. Being <laughs> be controversially like, that's like, <laughs> like yeah. positive on this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, story stuff. Um, yeah, I'm loving all that. Um, I guess we get into some of that sweet, sweet gameplay combat and puzzles and sneaking around and shit so here's the thing that i think is a reason for me why last of us is so high up on my game is all time list and why i'm loving last of us part two so much um is with a lot of these very story focused games um sometimes the gameplay isn't as up to par per se or just kind of serviceable at most like recently i played the witcher kind of the same red dead redemption's combat wasn't particularly great um but I, Last of Us, I think it's it's different and it's weird, but it's hard to describe. But I love it generally. I didn't like know. especially in it's been a while since I played Part One, so I'm I'm trouble remembering exactly all the little details as far as comparison to. If I'm being honest, but yep. I love with Two for the most part how open it is as far as. Um, you being sneaky as far as you just silently killing them or just completely avoiding things or you know killing it people at points like okay time to go ham yeah. or um you know you get you you suck like me and get caught at some point and then you gotta mow everyone down or run away which I've done numerous times and so there have been multiple times which I you know just after I got done with the battle I hate that I got caught just because. Once I kill them, like I'm sure you do, look around every corner to find um, <laughs> materials Definitely and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you just kind of look at this map and it's like, I see what they wanted me to probably do here as far as mm-hmm. doing the stealth stuff. I'm like, man, I hate I missed all this. Yeah. Like there are a couple things like that. Like, man, I missed so much as far as the map design for this because I kind of failed early. But it's kind of cool that it can kind of work th- that way and all that. And for a lot of the sections, it was... Um, or encounters you can completely if you want to just run past them all to yeah. a point i also i mean i think this game um that's definitely one improvement i think from previous naughty dog games is i think like there's previous games i felt kind of bad about like running past an area or something like that in last of us i don't feel bad about that at all it feels like like you saw that you did a good like you got past them or whatever and it, you really do feel like it's such a like you die very easily in this and if everything goes to shit like you can't blast your way out like nathan drake does and stuff yeah. uh, like that so i mean whenever i've had those moments where i'm able to like sneak around the geography like get someone to go that way and get everyone out and i get to the other end and i never had to fight anyone i feel accomplished i'm like shit i did it you know it's like it's it's rewarding and yeah my whole thing with the combat is and and i think my opinion on it was never bad but it's gotten a lot better as i've gone on through the game i think the things that you are doing are pretty much identical for the most part to the original it's not like some sequels have like you know we're gonna throw a crazy wrench in this and have like this <laughs> um, whole new thing i think for the most part you're doing the same things but they feel a lot different 
Hmm. It, even when you're doing the same uh, things like and some of that is just the cinematic and the sound quality and stuff like whenever you get shot or you shoot someone like I, it's never there's never been a game that feels more visceral <laughs> with um shots and everything and you don't i don't even really feel like ellie is like video game protagonist bullet sponge like whenever she gets shot with a rifle it's like boom she goes flying backwards and it's not one of those you can't just like run at someone and take shots and you're fine it's like Mm. no you get knocked on your ass and it's like you better get the cover and there's just certain things like that and like even as simple as like being able to go prone there's been so many times like i shoot someone and i'd like dive into the grass and like try to hide from them and do it like like you said it, it the combat encounters feel you feel like you have more things at your disposal even if you maybe maybe don't mm. but just all of them kind of interact a lot better yeah and i feel like with this with two more than one again it's been a while since i played one so um but i feel like when everything you feel a little more like you're in ellie's shoes like because you're outnumbered in a lot of ways you got to think strategically or and sometimes like i'm running for my life or whatever to try to get to the the checkpoint or whatever like that i know is is probably there it's like man she's outnumbered she'd probably do this too after a point while right. she's obviously on a revenge mission mm-hmm. um you can't kill everyone there's gotta be time where you gotta run you gotta be smart about yeah. it and i like with this game it you know it can go most encounters can go in any which of these ways and it feels right yeah and there's just like in the first one that i feel like it's so much more in this one so much better in this one that I'll sometimes I go into an encounter where there's a bunch of people everywhere and it's like I have a bottle I have no ammo I have zero ammo I can't craft anything I have no (laughs) supplies I have a bottle it's like all right let's go (laughs) so it's like I sneak around throw the bottle knock someone out stealth them it's like do you have any ammo no you fucking don't fuck it's like bounce it's like some of those have been my favorite combat encounters when the game's like figure it out (laughs) you gotta figure this shit out and like sometimes that's like super rewarding one thing I like um and correct me if I'm off base some with this um uh, what I like here is you just have that butterfly knife at all times. Like, it can't break. Yeah. Like, in I, I one definitely one. like that better than the shiv system. Because, yeah. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't... The shiv system would be obnoxious in this. Because I feel like you have a lot more to worry about in this yeah. combat system versus the first I feel one. like, yeah, there's definitely some encounters here where there are a lot more people you got to worry about. Like, yeah. especially you want to try to do some stealthy stuff. Like, that thing would break very quick. And just, like, flipping between the different guns to be like, all right, what do I have ammo yeah. for? Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, I have ammo for this one. Like... I very rarely am choosing a gun because it's like, this is the gun I want to choose. It's usually like, this is what I have ammo for. It's like, it's oh shit, it. it's the bow. I wasn't thinking of it. Oh. Then it just, boop. Yep. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely tried to pull the bow out in like high octane situations. That just, oh, the, the <laughs> dog don't hunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, overall, like, I, I have understood people's complaints about The Last of Us 1 combat, even if I didn't completely share them. You know, like, yeah. I, I think there was definitely obvious room for their improvement, but I, there's a lot of people that just like hate The Last of Us combat, and I've always like really, I've always still really liked it. It's kind of the survival horrorness that I can get into. Like I, I prefer this type of combat even like more than Resident Evil Two, even though it's similar. But like I just feel like I'm doing more in this. I feel like I have mm-hmm. more in my disposal in this. And um, but I've understood complaints about the first one. But in this one, even though it's pretty similar, I think it is. It feels like a pretty big step up. Yeah, it, it, it's like yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, the laws are the same, but the the changes they made and just the way like you were talking about the cinematically and sound design wise and all that kind of stuff, it just adds to it to just fill in those holes that might have been in the yeah, first. Yeah, I'll game. be honest. A lot of it is feeling versus yeah. actual changed mechanics. It's just, but but you but you also can't just completely write it off. Mm-hmm by saying that like oh it's just you know sound design all that like that shit matters like this game has details that like have immersed me in ways that i haven't in others and like usually those immersive things kind of like fall apart like kind of fade away when you get to the combat it's like okay yeah the game's really pretty the voice acting and everything but like you know that and combat are kind of seen as two different things in this i kind of feel like they blend like whenever i'm in crazy firefights it feels 
like cinematic it doesn't mm. feel like a video game it feels like i really am scrounging for whatever the fuck i can get and like whenever i win i don't feel like ellie was some crazy badass i feel like she got lucky like she yeah. got the right angle on someone and it was you know, it's just it's special i think just the and that's just this entire game is it reminds me of red Dead redemption 2 a lot in the way that i'm like holy fuck the detail like you could have you could have stopped like <laughs> five steps in the creative process earlier and no one would have faulted you for it but they just go the extra mile with yeah. everything and i do think that matters i don't think it's all just extraneous bullshit i think the fact that they go that way all adds together to be like i feel like i'm in this fucking city yeah, yeah. So I guess as far as going kind of far with the realism and all that kind of stuff and the immersion, mm-hmm. let's talk about something that had made you know some people uncomfortable with the violence and mm, yeah. all that, like particularly like when you're in battles, just the way the sounds people make when they die, like when they gargle blood and mm. all that kind of stuff, or when you have to kill a dog. <laughs> yeah, those dogs are so obnoxious though that I'm like, all right, fucking like, like I'm too bad to try to get around you. Unfortunately, <laughs> man, uh, that, I stopped feeling bad about killing the dogs because they're just they're they're so obnoxious. It, it is kind of like heartbreaking, <laughs> like some of the sound, like the realistic sounds. Yeah, they may particularly make it like there's sometimes like I chopped on a machete and it's like, oh no. I would say like it is weird. It's hard to pinpoint the exact things because obviously I play like Mortal Kombat forever, and you rip people's insides out, and do all that, but it's it's done in such a goofy way and everything yeah. that like you know there's that there's that like um suspen- suspension of disbelief. I have never had a game that made me feel as gross for a kill as this mm. game has. Like it's not even close. Like. I'm still 15 and a half hours in and I'll still like kill someone and be like kind of recoil and be like, oh God, you know, it's just, it doesn't feel like a game that you just want to like mow down everyone. Yeah. Like, yeah, run there. Like, yeah, boy. Like, it doesn't feel that way. It's still 15 and a half hours in it feels like brutal. And then you'll kill someone and they're like, Stacy, no. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, one that was really sad is I was curious about something that's like, because you know, with the dogs, obviously, like a someone who's usually ro- walking them until they let him loose. Yeah. Like, what if I just kill the handler? The dog just stood around him crying. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> For a while until I until I got caught by someone else, and then it came charging. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was do, like, oh. Do you want Do you want my first piece of kind of negative um, okay. things about this? And I, I mean, I'm interested to see if you, if you, you feel this way at all. And this, this isn't like a, a fully formed hot take or anything. I mean, I do think at times like. I, 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 get, I get what they're going for and I think for the most part it works with the they're making you feel this violence and they're making you feel the fact that you know what you're doing is maybe not right mm-hmm. or the, you know it's maybe necessary but then like it definitely this whereas I feel like The Last of Us the original one it's fucked up and violent but you always felt like what you're doing you're doing because you had to to survive and everything mm-hmm. and it's you know like you have to get dirty you have to do this to, to survive Whereas Last of Us Part Two, I think, is definitely a lot more like making you like, should you be doing this? Is this necessary? You know, like, uh, like I, I think there's a lot more of that, um, and I do think at times that super violent and making you feel everything is like, you know, like yeah, dog crying over the guy. They they want you to feel bad in this game. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes that conflicts with other parts of the game. I think it there's times like last of us is a very one note thing in a good way it's like it's super dark and it's like it's reinforcing over and over again how humanity is selfish and how people will turn on each other in like troubling times and stuff like this that is the theme of last of us and it makes it so when they break away from that the few times they do it makes you cry and everything (laughs) when you see the touching moments the touching moments i like and everything but there are other parts where it's like i feel like the them the you know the commentary on violence kind of conflicts with some of the like video gaming and jokey parts of it like my my example and i'll spoil this and it's not really a spoiler because it's been on pictures everywhere there's someone you come up to and you like hold a knife to them you like are interrogating them or whatever 
they end up pulling their knife on you so you like stab them in the throat brutal death thing or whatever they fall down to the ground it's a really brutal scene and then they were playing a playstation vita and they dropped the vita on the ground and it's like this like little vita music hotline miami baby hotline miami or whatever like that moment did not work for me at all because i like there's just something about the this game is just so real and so many times and like i feel bad about individual kills that whenever you're like oh but we're gonna do this little gag here like isn't this funny i'm like not really like those two things kind of like that that kill it's like a brutal kill or whatever and that's supposed to be like a joke and funny and everything but then i round the corner and kill someone it's like oh you should feel bad about that kill like that dichotomy has sometimes like taken me out of the moment or be like mm-hmm. what you know what tone are we going for and there's other times where it's like there's other times where i feel like they've gone a little too close to the uncharted thing and being like don't you feel like a badass like you kill everyone and it's like jesse and this other person are like yeah go us or whatever and high five i'm like so which is it you know which is it is it the, the i should mm-hmm. feel fucked up about this or is it uh you're a badass you know it's uh, for the most part i think they've gotten it right but i think there are a few moments where i've been like now i don't know about that one you know i don't know if i got that same read on the vita part as you hmm. i don't know but it's i'm trying to think as far as the whole yeah the high-fiving and stuff i don't know i just think of it there everyone's a fucking psychopath having to grow up in this world so i'm just trying to I mean, yes. I mean, I guess that that is the general thing. But I feel like, like in that moment, that di- it didn't really feel like that was. It felt like a character development moment between these mm-hmm. two characters you care about. It didn't really feel like a. It, no, it, it didn't feel like an extension of the commentary that the rest of the game feels like it is. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's moments where I feel like they like drop the veil and they're like, okay, you get we're being super serious and making this commentary, but we're gonna lift this veil for a second because we have this. We want them to have a cute, funny moment, and it's like, okay, the serious veil is back on on now. And like, mm. you know, I just feel like I've seen through the cracks once or twice in that way. That tonal shift hasn't quite worked for me. I don't know if I caught that personally. No. Sorry, I mean it's fine. No, yeah. I, I, I want to have these discussions. I mean, you can elaborate on like what and why you think that way, but I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't think it's like egregious, but I definitely have. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe if I saw the th- parts you were talking about again, because I've obviously seen them. No. Um, I just not, maybe just didn't read them that certain way or whatever. Really think much of it. I mean, it's kind of one of those things. The only reason I think this is because The Last of Us Part Two is such a different type of video game, and it mm-hmm. like it like. I don't the whole like video game subvert like suspension of disbelief thing that you have to do in every single video game. I feel like I've had to do so much less in The Last of Us than any other game. Mm. So it makes those moments just stand out more to me when it's like, you know, we're gonna this still has to be a video game, so we wanna pull put this like cute reference in here or whatever, and it's like but that's like coupled with intense violence because intense violence is kind of the only thing this game knows how to do gameplay wise and there's times where like it just seems like they've almost got desensitized to it themselves where they're like brutal death scene but you see brutal death scenes all the time so like here's the crazy gag with that and it's like those two coupled together just of like you know it's like it sometimes like do you know what you just did (laughs) because like that that whole scene was fucking that was the whole thing was fucked up like that's still fucked up right (laughs) have we forgotten that this is fucked up (laughs) everything's fucked up yeah that and also i totally get how people um just don't like last of us in the sense that it is downer after downer Mm -hmm. after downer after downer and there are definitely i think that is part of the last of us thing that's part of what it's going for but there are times where like especially in some of the side stories you've read about like you read about you read the um documents that people leave behind Mm -hmm. there's never been some times where i I read it it's like yep this is gonna go to shit and they're all gonna kill each other and you walk a few rooms later it's like yep they all kill each other it's like <laughs> you start to feel like you're in Groundhog Day, where it's like, "Yep, humans are gonna suck. Humans always suck. There's no light at the end of the tunnel." It, it could feel that way, hmm. but like I said, I think the few moments of light in The Last of Us feel earned because of all the darkness. I've been talking a whole hell of a lot. Do you, like, <laughs> do you have anything you want to say? No, you've been talking good stuff. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I don't have much to add. Um, 
Well, for that whole note thing, I thought I just thought of a reason for that from a game developer standpoint. <laughs> um, you want to put all that in there because not everyone is going to find every single note. I mean, so yeah. if you're going to find, if you're the person that like us, you're going to look at all of them. Yeah, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that. Stuff. I mean, The Last of Us is not lacking in darkness, that's yeah, like, yeah. but. I do think overall, like in the first one, people always thought the Ishmael um, storyline that you get through the context clues and the writing and everything. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like this game, just in my 15 and a half hours, has had like eight of those. There's a lot of storylines through there that I feel like are really well done. Mm -hmm. Whereas the last of us one had like a few little things here and there, but they were usually like a, you know, one note of like a short little story. Like this is like, has had arcs. There have been like multiple arcs over because you do spend a lot of this first part of the game in one city which i do think we should talk about a little bit too hmm. um but you get kind of like it's like oh this is it, there's been callbacks to something i got in like the second hour of the game or something and then like now in the hour 15 i get like the next note for that that's you know that stuff has been really cool mm -hmm. i feel like i'm getting many stories in this one game they just wanted to write a book of short stories like, let's just throw into our fucking game. <laughs> Practically, yeah. <laughs> um, my my other like kind of like criticism, and it's not even really criticism because it's not super fair to The Last of Us Part Two, but I do think one thing that like right now, fifteen and a half hours in, who knows? Right now, I still do think I prefer The Last of Us One overall. Right now, and one of those reasons is again not super fair to The Last of Us Part Two, and that's that. The Last of Us was kind of this cross-country thing that you were seeing a bunch of different parts of the United States going through all of this, and it was kind of like you got this journey that you're going on with these two characters and, like, time skips and doing all this and going mm -hmm. and whatever. The Last of Us Part Two, for the most part, had so far has been a lot more, like, we're going to focus in one area. And, like, what would have been in The Last of Us Part One, like, four chapters would have been in four different places and the last was part two four chapters are all in one city but they're just like focusing in and it's a yeah. story that's like specific to in that city and that's one of those things like if the last was part two had just done the same thing again we would be criticizing it for that mm -hmm. it was kind of a like lose-lose situation but i w i definitely got to a point um like recently in my gameplay where i'm like i'm, I'm a little tired of being in the city you know, I, I feel like I've been seeing a lot of the same environments, you know. Like, I, I definitely got the little bit of the fatigue of, like, we're still in the city. You know, it's, it, when I just think back to The Last of Us and, like, going all these yeah. different places. Again, not super fair mm -hmm. to part two, but definitely something I've So, seen. something I find um, that I think it's kind of a step up from step from The Last of Us 1 as far as that kind of stuff goes. I agree with you, you know, be nice to have in different environments than just pretty much Seattle Besides the first um, little bit, um, what's like is the actual interior of the buildings, especially you know when you can go from the city into inside pretty instantaneously, like breaking through windows and stuff, mm -hmm. and just kind of use all that as a battleground. Um, is there are a lot of different like types of places, like an arcade or a boutique and stuff. Like they did a good job of making those like shops, individual shops and stuff, more of their own compared to Last yeah. of Us One, which to me kind of makes up for it some to what you're saying i agree with you yeah um but i think that helps it to where if it was more like the last one where all interiors were really mostly the same yeah. that I, I feel like i'd be feeling that more for sure but you know where you go into all this all these different places and you're seeing all these different interiors to these buildings that makes it feel different all that kind of stuff yeah and the, even if it's be, a different way to be fair i think they're doing it right because yeah. i feel like seattle has been fully realized like i yeah. feel like we have been in seattle like we have been in many different like areas like i've even wanted to look up and see like what's the real life picture of some of these places because mm -hmm. you know we just like so fully um explored it so like yeah, they're they're doing that right, and and I'm not even saying like I think this one has its merits over the first one too, but it's just one of those things. Like I'm just naturally probably going to be more, you know, like um leaning towards the one that was kind of this cross country. And I mean, to be fair, The Last of Us Part One is going to be a hard game to top. Yeah, I kind of right now predict that this is going to slot right under The Last of Us in my top of all time list. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm predicting now. I have a whole other half of this game of story to us, so who the fuck, who fucking knows? But that is not a that is not criticism, really. Like, like the last of us is a fucking transcendent game for me. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good shit. Good, Good shit. shit. I'm very curious. I got to... There, there are a couple story beats that I'm sure are the reasons people don't like this story so much is for yeah. the actual story goes. And I believe I hit like the second main one. <laughs> okay, well, I have not done that. So let's not talk about that. But yeah. we will talk about the first one if you're ready to move into spoilers, Jeffrey. For spoiler just, time. Just a little bit because we are going to have the spoiler cast. So we are well, not. I'm going to make the time come for spoiler time. Yeah, please do that. Yeah. Um, really, don't, I don't want to talk too much here. We're probably mostly going to be talking about the first big twist. Um, so, so spoiler yeah. time. So th- thank you guys for listening to the podcast. If you have not um, played through the last of us part two all the way through, I guess um, potentially potential spoilers all the way for roughly 15 ish hours of the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's about, you know, if, if, if you just know that you're like past 15 hours or whatever, then, you know, you can listen, but yeah. Yeah. So be weary. And listen to the spoiler cast we're going to do in Responding Fire. All right. Goodbye. So, I fucking love... (laughs) I fucking love that they did it. They fucking did what we thought they were going to do in the first game. They just did it like, what, an hour and a half, two hours later than we thought? Like, I can't express how much I love that decision narratively and how called off guard... it, It was perfect. It was done perfectly because the second it happened i was the like nanosecond it happened i went through my head i was like darby she said she was going to this town for him for the this man i was like you fucking idiot how did you not like see this and, like, maybe yeah. you saw it coming but like i like i i didn't catch on to that until like it was happening and i don't like, think i noticed him oh, them saying cause... him necessarily yeah she said like he's in there or yeah. something like abby did um to him yeah. Owen or whatever yep. um, but I that was one of the most uh, f- like impactful video game scenes I think I've ever seen and I could I, I haven't seen it because I'm too wary of looking at people's reactions and stuff right. online I imagine don't, don't, don't even put last of us okay, into your search gotcha. bar no, 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 no. <laughs> like I said I was terrified looking for the damn bitch uh, um, I imagine him dying early on in the game is what some people are mad about and I also imagine people 100% are, I also imagine people are mad that he died so quickly and nonchalantly I fucking love, I love it. it I fucking <laughs> love it because you are so called like even when he was I mean from the moment she's, he says, "Oh, I'm hi, I'm Joel," and then everything goes silent. Like my heart dropped to the. Like, yeah, we got the like, gun like. Pfft. Oh god! <laughs> like, and oh, then no. she did that. Like yeah, and they, they let you see his leg, and it's like Joel's never walking again. Yeah, yeah. Joel is never like. It's like I still, my brain still wasn't thinking he's gonna die. Even in that yeah. moment, I'm like, "Fuck!" Not and, like it took me another second to realize. I know what's happening here. <laughs> Even when he was a bloody mess on the ground, my mind was still like, he's, he's going to get out of it somehow. He's going to get out of it somehow. He's going to get out of it somehow. And then, crunch, like, boom. And I'm like, that's how this would happen. I mean, that is, with what Joel did at the end, this makes sense, but you are so caught off guard in that moment because, like, you, media and fiction in general has taught you that this doesn't happen. Yeah, it's taught you that this the this guy is the protagonist that you were like were in his shoes so much with such a big part going through. Media tells you that like we're gonna put him in a bad situation right away in the sequel, but he's not gonna die. And if he does die, we're gonna do this long out drawn out scene where he's yeah. kind of dying there in Ellie's arms. They're gonna say these heartfelt goodbyes. Fucking no, nope. <laughs> She's gonna cry and like scream like don't do it and just and god what? ashley johnson mm-hmm. ashley yeah. fucking johnson <laughs> for that that whole thing was just i swear she doesn't win the award the game awards for i can't imagine <laughs> anything else <laughs> just can't even imagine it and that was immediately your head's going through like what is this game like what is this game gonna be oh my god yeah and, and then it makes sense like when you get one the it, it's such a great twist because it catches you so off guard. But once after you're gone from it, you're like, of course, this is this is what this has to be. Like, like Joel's story more or less has been told. Mm-hmm. And like what he did at the end, you ha- like in, in that that moment also immediately makes me wrestle with my own. Like The Last of Us shouldn't have a sequel. Because as soon as I see that moment, it's like I needed to see like that. This is what would happen. And you needed to see this. And 
Now you need to see what that does to Ellie. Yeah. You know. Really. And it makes more sense now um, because obviously Dana survives and that was the popular theory that she was the one to die. That she was the revenge mission. She yeah. was the revenge mission. But as we're leading up to that, it's kind of like even I was kind of thinking mm. it's like, hmm, they don't seem as cl- I mean, they seem close and especially as you go through it. Um, I don't know if you re- yeah, you, you, you've been through a couple of flat the flashbacks um mm. you can read ellie's journal there when she was younger right. and dana's frequent in there and, Je- and jesse and stuff yeah. um so th- they've been close for a couple of years and all that kind of stuff but you don't get the f- you don't get the feeling at the time that her death would react you know right. make her react the way we've seen in trailers and, and like stuff. romantically they were only just getting started yeah. in this yeah. but joel makes perfect sense <laughs> yes. and it makes me like okay this makes a lot more sense now yeah, and uh, you know we were all like you know when the trailer from the reveal trailer first happened it's like is Joel dead what's happening there it's like well at that moment technically I, I don't the tr- scene from that first trailer is not in the game I imagine yeah which I know it was before yeah, yeah, yeah it's like I mean maybe we'll get that flashback at some point maybe but M- maybe but at, no I mean she's doing the whole string thing and then she's like, I'm gonna kill every last one of them oh so that one sorry sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry yeah. talking about the first actual yeah, yeah, reveal yeah, trailer sorry, sorry, sorry. like so technically I mean that if that were to happen Joel would just be a hallucination and all that kind of stuff but you know even back then we were like is Joel gonna die what's gonna happen here is it gonna be revenge like and then they kind of threw us off the scent and all that kind of stuff with Dana especially by also letting you play as Joel for a second because I think yeah. they, they wanted you to think like oh, okay so you're gonna be switching. switching you're gonna be switching from Joel to Ellie it's like nope you played as Joel for like five minutes <laughs> yeah. and then and then they actually early in the game make you play as his killer and you're like who right. is this chick and he saves her like yeah, yeah they definitely they like, throw try to throw uh, that, that, that whole segment times. when running away from the yeah infected ass again it's fucking crazy also something to point out just the um the kind of action set pieces for this kind of stuff for moments like that big step up from the last close <laughs> yeah, one yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it's also like I'm still like again we're halfway through and I'm still so curious and scared of where this is gonna go. Not in the fact of it being bad, but in like we kind of know it, it, it's so interesting because again, like I said, in the first Last of Us, you're doing fucked up things, but it was usually the bad people or it was for the sake of survival, and it's you're going mm-hmm. forward. In this one, and especially now that you know that Ellie knew, Ellie's known this whole okay. time. Okay, okay. I, this one else yeah. was like, have you, have you gotten there? Yeah, Ellie's known <laughs> I didn't want to bring up. This whole time, which I love that they waited to reveal that until now, then because then it puts this whole mission in a different yeah. light. The fact that that's happening, like this violence is not really warranted completely because you know that like Joel deserved to die. He there fucked were, over the whole human race. Yeah, like, and and I love God, I love it so much because like they present the wolves and they present everything in such an um, antagonistic light, and you you associate with Ellie, so you're like, of course Ellie's right. Like, we're doing this or we're doing this or whatever. But then every time you like, and you can get caught up in that when you're like shooting them and like it's you and Jesse and Dina and you're going through like it feels like a video game adventure. It feels like the good guys versus the bad guys. But I constantly keep making myself remember it's like that's not really true like these people are probably not really bad people like i mean there are bad ones and there are good ones just like everyone else Hmm. but like abby had probably a very 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 good reason to kill joel and if the roles were reversed ellie would probably be abby i mean like she's not this villain that that ellie thinks she is so everything you're doing might be completely fucked up and like you're in the wrong for doing it you mm. know and you were starting to see that in the fact that jesse's like no johnny or um tommy's right there we have to go after him and then and, like she doesn't yeah. go save tommy it's clear that she cares more about her like mm. crazed you know revenge church than her friends yeah Sorry, I'm trying to be wary of what I say. Yeah, yeah. I know. We're, we're, I'm, I'm getting too close. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm close. sorry. Stop, I want to say stop th- right there. Let's just stop right there. Let's go back. Let's go, let's... No, but yeah. well, the, the fact that you know the reason why the wolves are doing it is is a big important thing. Yep. Yeah, it's like that. Also, is a reason to like it helps justify this game existing. It's like okay, this whole thing, the whole basis is 
based on the ending of okay. one. It's like it is a continuation. This all this is the second part of this full story. Right. Yeah, and that end is the freaking red wedding of the you know that's the that's the thing that the entire sequel is yeah. you know touched by, which they're doing it in such a good way right now they really are and I have not been able to predict like anything that's happening every every, every time we go on a, a new cut scene I'm just <laughs> what, yeah. what what's it what is it but, well yeah especially since since you know that they killed off Joel the way they did it's like what's off the table here. Exactly. <laughs> it's like all bets are and fucking th- That's off. so exciting because you don't really get that in most fiction for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like, especially popular fiction and especially when it's less video games. Yeah. And uh, like I said, the biggest compliment I can pay this is that the, the end of The Last of Us 1 is like one of my favorite video game moments of all time, if not my favorite and they kind of made me feel that again in the first hour and a half of the sequel. And it's just, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, man, I was so excited after that. I was so like, like I'd been stabbed in the heart. And like, I, I wish I could see my reaction. Cause I literally had a, like my hands on my head, like, Oh, oh God, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember you were kind of hearing my reactions, even if mine was more subdued. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you. I could just hear the TV. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm I'm like Thank you. <sighs> well, there you've been wondering like, what, well, where did the fireflies fit? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. So God, that like I'll always remember that shotgun blast. This is Joel was like, yeah, I know who you are. Bam! And it's like that wasn't just like a shot in the leg. That was a uh, his fucking knee is eviscerated. It's mm-hmm. like God. All right. I'm excited, but we need to stop because we are gonna have a whole spoiler cast. And I want to go play, even though it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm not gonna be able to play that much, but I'm gonna play until midnight. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Um, tune into that. Last of Us spoiler cast. If you're watching this, then you've probably beaten The Last of Us. Go check out our full thoughts with all with um, Chad and all of his friends. It's gonna be fun. Yep, and look forward to next week when we will definitely be talking about that Avengers video that's on Wednesday, the Cyberpunk thing, the Pokemon presents, and oh, the new game plus thing presentation where all the Japanese studios is happening tomorrow. We will talk about all that shit. Next Fucking week. never ends. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.